Hi folks, I'm Miss Erin from C.C. Meller Memorial Library here for today's middle grade moment where we're going to be talking about some books that are great for tween and teen readers. Now, this program is part of the Allegheny County Library Association Summer Reading Program. So if you're looking for more great programs from other librarians across Allegheny County, you can visit aclasummerreading.org for more information. But let's get started. Let's talk about some books. All of the books that I'm going to be talking about today are also available for checkout on Hoopla. So if your library isn't open just yet, or if you are still more interested in reading ebooks and e-audiobooks than going to the library and picking up a physical copy, you can get one there. All right, today, all three of the books that we're gonna be talking about are fantasy novels. I thought it'd be fun to get away for a little bit at the start of the summer. The first book I want to tell you about is called The Dragon Egg Princess by Ellen O. And this is the story of Jiho Park. He is a young man who lives next to a forest called the Kitahara. And the Kitahara is an enchanted forest. It is in a kingdom that has a lot of magic in it still. And the forest is full of mythical creatures and a lot of them are not nice to humans. So this book is a little bit dark, a little bit scary. I don't know if I could have read it right before bed, if that helps you, if that helps you decide if you want to read it. But the thing to know about the Kitahara is that J Jiho Park's dad and the princess of the kingdom, Princess Coco, both disappeared into the forest five years before. So everybody knows this forest is dangerous. Everybody knows people who go in don't always come back out. But a new group from a foreign land called the, the Orion is coming in and they want to clear the forest. They wanna cut it all down and they wanna build a railroad and bring the kingdom into the modern day. It turns out, while this kingdom is still working mostly with magic and um, very traditional means, a lot of the rest of the world is very technologically advanced and they don't believe in magic anymore and they don't believe in the things that everyone says are in the Kitahara. So Jiho, because his dad has disappeared, um, he needs to make money to support his sisters and his family and so he agrees to become a guide in the forest for this group that is going in to clear it. So I'm not going to tell you why the book is called The Dragon Egg Princess but I think you might be able to guess who the princess is and I hope that you will read it and find out why The Dragon Egg Princess is important. Again this is The Dragon Egg Princess by Ellen O. And this is available as both an ebook and an e audiobook on Hoopla. The next book that I want to tell you about is a little more historically based. This is called Sweep, the story of a girl and her monster. And it's by local author Jonathan Oxier. And it's the story of Nan Sparrow, who works for a chimney sweep. She is a child. And in that time, chimney sweeps used children to go up into the really narrow, tight spaces inside a chimney to clean them out. It's a gross job. It's very dirty. It's very scary and risky. And Nan is working with this because the man who took care of her, the sweep, disappeared a few years ago and left her on her own. And so she has been working as a chimney sweep, remembering all the things he taught her, but also really hoping that she sees him again soon. One day she gets stuck in a chimney. She thinks she's good, she thinks she's got enough space, but it turns out it's too tight. And then there's a chimney fire. Somehow she escapes with the help of a magical creature. When she wakes up, she finds that there's a creature there with her and it is a golem made out of smoke and ash and dust. And she names him Charlie. And this book, like it says in the title, is the story of a girl and her monster, her golem, her Charlie. And so while the world is a pretty scary dark world. I mean obviously it's very dangerous for kids like Nan who are working as sweeps. The story itself is very heartfelt. It's very touching. It's not 
as scary a story as the last one that we talked about. So if you're looking for something a little gentler, a little, something that you know will end up making you feel good by the end, this is a good book to read. All right, so the third book that I wanna tell you about intimidated me when I first saw it. This is called Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky, and it's, what, it's by Kwame Mbalia. And the reason it intimidated me is because it's a really long one. This is about 480 pages, but I assure you, it does not feel like it once you get started. It goes super fast. I was so excited by how quickly I was reading it. And it's the story of a boy named Tristan Strong. And Tristan just lost his best friend, Eddie, in um, a bus accident. And he's really hurting from the fact that his best friend is gone. And his best friend left him a journal um, that's full of the stories that Tristan's grandma would tell them. So lots of um, African myths and legends, lots of black American folk tales and folk heroes. And um, when, when, when Tristan loses his first match as a boxer, um, he's really disappointed in himself, his dad is really disappointed in him, and his grandfather is devastated. But his grandfather agrees to take Tristan in for the summer to give him some time away from his grief and from the fact that his boxing isn't going super well. And so while at his grandparents' house, Tristan is watching the journal and wakes up and there's this small doll creature that he finds in his room and it steals his journal. And when, Tr when, when Tristan chases after it, he ends up in a totally different world. It turns out he's punched a hole in the sky, like in the title, and he is in a place called Midpass, where all of the African gods and legends and all of the black American um, folklore heroes that he's been hearing about, like John Henry and Br'er Rabbit and Anansi the Spider, all of those are real gods. And he is there and has to figure out how to get home and how to save the world that they, that they live in, how to save the people who are still living in that world of legends. So like I said, this, is, this goes super fast. It's really exciting. It's really fast paced. And I love what it does with um, myths and legends that I already knew and ones that I didn't know. It, also, it, it tells the story as it goes. And one of the things that is um, most exciting about Tristan is that it turns out that he is a storyteller. The reason that he can actually help out in this world is because he has the ability to tell stories that come to life. And so I wanted to suggest an activity for you that might be fun if you are also interested in becoming a storyteller and practicing your skills telling stories. So I have a bag here that is full of rocks, and these are my storytelling rocks. And the reason they're storytelling rocks is because the other people who work at the library with me helped me paint them so that I can use them to tell stories. So you can find some rocks at your yard or your house or maybe at the hardware store, and if you have some acrylic paint, you can paint some story rocks too or maybe you glue some paper on them, maybe you do something else. It's just nice to have something tactile to hold when you're telling a story. So because we were talking about fantasy books today, I decided to use some elements of my favorite books of fantasy. So I have a rock with a castle on it, I have one with a dragon, I have one with a wizard's hat or a witch's hat, depending on which side you want to look at. One with a crown for royalty or princesses like the dragon egg princess. Ooh, one with some water. Maybe it's a flood. Maybe it's a giant storm. Maybe it's a, a magical lake. I don't know yet. I haven't told my story. One with a sword and a shield for a battle. One with a unicorn, because who doesn't love a unicorn? And one with a magic wand for some more magic. 
So you can, when you make some storytelling stones, you can use a story that you already know and love. Maybe you really like the story of Little Red Riding Hood and you wanna make one with Little Red Riding Hood and one with the wolf and one with grandma and lay out your stones so that you can tell the story in the order that you want to and your stones will help you remember the order that things go. You can also use them to make up a new story every time. Maybe you just reach in your bag and add each stone to the story as you go. So we are in a far off kingdom and in our kingdom is a dragon. We have a dragon that lives in this castle and this dragon has lived in the castle for hundreds of years. And it is the king of the dragons. And this dragon has magic. The magical, the magical ability that this dragon has is to tell stories. And one day, the storytelling dragon decides to leave its home. And maybe you just keep pulling rocks out and keep telling the story as you go. I'm gonna put some instructions that are written down for making your own storytelling stones if you'd like. Um, and I hope that you get a chance to check out these books if, you've, if you liked their descriptions and wanna, wanna read more. Thanks for spending time with us this week at this week's middle grade moment. I hope we'll see you back here soon. And again, if you'd like to check out other things that are going on at that are going on from libraries across Allegheny County, you can check out aclasummerreading.org for more information. Have a wonderful week. Bye.